So today's topic is exploring the latest trends in engineering analysis tools. I'm kind of excited. We've got three great presenters, Silvio, Terrence, and Damon. I'll tell you a little bit about them and some really good content to review. Today's agenda is really four main topics, some advanced material mechanics, optimization, generative design, some acoustical stuff, some things that I was kind of surprised to learn that were possible, as well as some uh, compact electronics. So SolidWorks simulation that we're going to talk about entirely today is really one of, of many different things that we do here at Hawk Ridge Systems. There's, of course, the CAD, file management, electrical with schematics and PCB design tools. There's technical communication tools. We have a development team that sells custom tools they've created and can write custom tools to solve your unique challenges. There's manufacturing applications like CAM for CNC or inspection, as well as 3D printing. And finally, it's worth mentioning, we do a lot of training. If you're using simulation and haven't taken training, I always recommend doing so uh, and training old users of simulation. They always learn some, some good stuff. So simulation contains many different components. There's the SOLIDWORKS simulation or FEA tools. There's Simulia, Abacus, and some other tools there that you'll learn about today. You'll see a little bit of SOLIDWORKS plastics, SOLIDWORKS flow simulation for CFD, the electronics cooling is a great way to do that. And then XFLOW, which is an exciting newer simulation tool. First up, I'd like to introduce Silvio Perez. Silvio is out of our Mountain View, California office, and he's been with us for a little over eight years. Starting in a support role, he moved into an application engineering position, then simulation specialist, and today he's our simulation product manager in charge of the FEA and motion tools. Silvio is extremely well-versed. He spends his working hours providing simulation demos, benchmarks, service work, and training. Recently, we've seen many existing simulation users asking about how they can create even more realistic structural simulations. Most everyone starts out using linear static studies, and those come with a bunch of assumptions Sylvia is going to explain. I remember back in college when I first took a class on linear static analysis. At the end of the semester, the professor says to us, now everything you'll see in the real world is actually not linear and dynamic. So the answer to increasing realism is including these effects. Sylvia, can you tell us about what's available? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, like you mentioned, you know, we live in a nonlinear world, but we can't really talk about nonlinear analysis until we talk about a linear static analysis. So we usually start with the linear static analysis because it's a more simplified scenario where it accounts for certain, certain assumptions that, uh, again, simplify the process. And those assumptions are, the main one is that we're assuming that the material behaves linear elastically. So we're living in the linear range if we're looking at a stress-strain curve, and really what we can do with the linear static analysis is really say, have we reached the yield point or have we, or have we not? And because of that, we are then only, uh, only able to account for small displacement, so no permanent deformation, low, no large deformation, and we assume that the loads are being applied slowly and gradually. So if you fit within those assumptions, we say that it's a good fit for linear static, but if you do want to see what the stresses are in the post-yield range, or if you're dealing with complex materials like rubbers, plastics, then we graduate to a nonlinear analysis where we can count for nonlinear materials, large deformation, and a change in contact. So the question really comes down to, you know, what is classified as a nonlinear analysis? And there's three major categories. And you see the animations there that kind of reflect those three different categories. One is geometric nonlinear. Uh, that assumes, again, large deformation, being able to see uh, excessive loading conditions or being able to apply more load con uh, excessive load conditions to be able to see a more deformed shape, maybe possibly seeing what's happening post yield. Right? And the second thing here is uh, material. We have a variety of different material models that we can account for, like plastics, rubbers, uh, nitinol, and the, the last thing here is contact. You see in those last two animations, we're able to simulate parts moving along and accounting for the contact that's relative to the neighboring parts. So we can solve more complicated problems 
more realistic scenarios that we may be seeing in, in real life. So if you are utilizing the tool, uh, SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium gives you these material models. So looking at the, the native material database, where in a linear static we just had a linear, uh, linear model, with a nonlinear analysis we now have this extensive material model where we can define the plasticity von Mises, which allows us to define the stress strain curve that you see there on the right hand side. And again, we're able to create a hyperelastic material where you start defining the material constants that are, are associated with that, and we can now see the behavior referencing a more realistic material. So hopefully that answered your question there, Tim. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. So next up we have Terrence Wu. Terrence located up in our Vancouver office. He's been with us for about six years. Uh, recently he was promoted from a senior application engineering position to a Simulia product specialist. Uh, Terrence enjoyed the outdoors. Last year he really wore me out skiing at Whistler. I went back to the hotel and crashed while he went and played another game of hockey. So Terrence, I know Simulia Abacus has some amazing nonlinear tools, and with the release of Structural Simulation Engineer for SOLIDWORKS, some of these capabilities are easier than ever to access. Can you give us an overview of what's available from the Simulia product line? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks, Tim. Um, so yeah, of course we've got uh, nonlinear capabilities within SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, um, but we have these Simulia tools as well, and as Tim mentioned, that's what I'm responsible for here at Hawkridge. Um, before I really answer the question a bit further, do you need to maybe explain what Simulia is a little bit for those of you that are on the call and aren't familiar with it? Uh, Dassault Systems, the parent company of SolidWorks, uh, has a number of brands for uh, different things. Uh, SolidWorks, you know, it's one that we're all familiar with, probably their most popular brand. And Simulia is another one, and that's their lineup for realistic simulation. Uh, within that Simulia brand, there are a number of different products. Uh, some of the ones we're going to mention today are Abacus, probably the most famous Simulia product. It's an advanced FEA tool. Uh, something called Structural Simulation Engineer, which Tim just mentioned, and Xflow, which is a CFD tool. I'm going to get started talking about Abacus here. Uh, it is by far the most well-known of the Simulia products. Uh, it has a long history that goes back to before the Smulia brand even existed. And this long history means that it is a proven finite element analysis tool. Uh, it's especially well suited for nonlinear analysis, as that's what it was built to do from the ground up. Uh, we have those capabilities in SOLIDWORKS simulation, and a lot of the capabilities I'm going to go through here really do overlap with that. Uh, Abacus is what we call a more advanced level tool, an analyst level tool, and so it does have more capability than SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, but whether you'd want to go with the SOLIDWORKS tool or the Abacus tool uh, really comes down to your specific application and how much nonlinearity you need to represent. Uh, while this is a very capable tool that can handle very advanced analysis, uh, it does come with a more advanced usage set and it's harder to get a grasp of. It's not quite as streamlined or easy to use as the SOLIDWORKS tool. Uh, it's not bad though and it does come with an associative interface so you can import your geometry uh, with associativity into Abacus like you would with the SOLIDWORKS simulation. So it's not out of this world hard but it is more challenging and so it has to be worth it. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, it is ideally suited to nonlinear analysis and it uses the Abacus standard solver for those types of the problems. Uh, it does also come with an explicit solver that works really well for high speed dynamic events. And Abacus is really strong when you need to represent advanced material models. Uh, you have complicated or detailed meshing that you need to get into, or you have a lot of contact in your model. Uh, it is also offered as what they call extended packaging, and Tassot actually throws in some of the other Simulia branded products with Abacus. Uh, later on in the presentation, we'll talk about FESAFE, which is a fatigue analysis tool, EyeSight for process automation, and Tosca for topology and shape optimization. So 
Silvio talked about three different types of nonlinearity that can come up in an analysis. And I'm going to go through those and talk about when abacus is going to be really strong for those types of nonlinearity. Uh, the first type he mentioned was geometric nonlinearity, large deformations. Uh, when we really go and change the shape of something, whether you know it's a rubber that we're uh, moving quite a bit as it's quite flexible, uh, maybe we're taking a piece of metal and we're forming it, or that example on the right, we're really crushing something that would go beyond what I'd call large deformation and maybe into what I'd call extreme deformation. Uh, that's where we really need a solver that's well suited for that, and that's where Abacus can really help out. Silvio also mentioned material nonlinearity. Elastomers or rubbers, great example of this, and one of the real common situations where people like to use Abacus. Uh, another application is composite materials, representing you know, fiber reinforced composites, you want to see delamination, that's something that Abacus can do for you. Uh, but the real strength of Abacus and its ability to model different materials is in the way that this happens. Uh, we can go and represent all our common materials, you know, metals, rubbers, you can even do some less common stuff like concrete or clay and sand. Uh, but we're not siloed into picking individual material models. The way these are defined in Abacus, we actually have a whole slew of different properties or material behaviors that we can build in, and we can combine those in different ways uh, to get new combinations, and so there can be hundreds of different types of material definitions that you can come up with by different combinations of these properties. The third type of nonlinearity that Sylvia mentioned was contact nonlinearity. And of course, this can be represented in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Uh, it can become a little bit challenging, though, if you have a lot of different contact. Uh, in most tools, contact needs to be specified individually. Uh, so, you know, for that Jenga block on the slide here, we'd have to go and click on the faces of each block that touches each other block. and you know, there'd be hundreds of combinations between which block hits which. Uh, if we're looking at the car on the left, there's probably thousands of contacts in there. And so setting that up could take weeks or months. In Abacus, we have something called general contact, which allows us to simply specify for the entire analysis that things should make contact. We can include friction or other effects, and it really reduces the amount of setup and allows us to represent these really complicated situations quite easily and quickly. So for these three different types of nonlinearity, in when we get to a certain level, Abacus offers these advantages. And also when they these nonlinearities show up, they don't usually show up individually. We get contact, geometry, material nonlinearity all at the same time. And a lot of people take that to the next level and we start to look at damage. So what happens once we hit that yield strength or what happens once we hit the fracture strength? Uh, in Abacus, we can represent crack propagation, delamination of composites. We can go and crush things, shear things, run impact analyses. And so it's really just taking it one step further. Uh, of course, uh, Tim did mention that there is a new tool called Simulia Structural Simulation Engineer. Uh, this is a new finite element analysis tool. Uh, it's being announced to all SOLIDWORKS users, and it's on the cloud-based 3D experience platform from Dassault Systems. Uh, it uses the Abacus solver. So all the stuff we just talked about, all those capabilities, a lot of those are going to be available in this SSE tool. Of course, it comes with a new modern user interface, uh, and it's on that cloud platform. It is integrated with SOLIDWORKS as well. If you have set something up in SOLIDWORKS simulation, you can actually import that right across. And so we've got a couple of options here within the Simulio line. We've got Abacus, we've got this SSE tool uh, that I think are, are really good for nonlinear analysis when you need to go to that next level. It looked like some pretty cool options, Terrence. I really like that general contact as somebody who spent a long time setting up those kinds of problems involving contact. What, what I've found is by automating the simulation process, and what I mean by that is by changing model dimensions or simulation parameters like load magnitudes and that kind of thing, you can cover the design space so much more thoroughly and quickly than conventional methods, enabling us to really find the best design. 
Silvio, can you tell me about the optimization tools included in the different SOLIDWORKS simulation packages and what is all available? Yeah, definitely. So what you're looking at here is the simulation product matrix uh, separated into three different products. So simulation premium gives you everything you see on your screen. That's uh, where I was referring to the nonlinear capabilities that are available. Uh, it's available within that package. But when we're talking about optimization, we actually get that capability and we have a couple options there uh, and we get that starting with simulation professional. Right? And the first one that we really talk about is design study optimization. You may be a little bit more familiar with this. This is uh, referencing uh, what's available within just your normal SOLIDWORKS CAD, but it's a means for you to automate the process of making those design changes, such as the material thickness, material dimensions, uh, the, uh, the boundary conditions that are associated within a simulation project. So you can vary those different parameters and give it some design rules based on your SOLIDWORKS sensor saying, I don't want to exceed a certain stress or I don't want it to deform a certain level of deformation. Uh, or you can even reference uh, other scenarios like a frequency analysis where maybe your frequency range should be between a certain value. Right? So we can reference those constraints and ultimately utilize the optimization portion of minimizing the mass. And with that design optimization, really what you're left with is still a parametric model that you can reference a part and an assembly. Right? Uh, the secondary thing that we can do here is with topology optimization. <clears throat> and that's something that is introduced within 2018. But there's quite a bit of a difference here. And with design optimization, you see again, we're utilizing this parametric study where we're referencing those parameters and is letting us know what scenarios have passed and which ones have failed, and specifically what design constraint has failed. So it then allows us to see what the optimal shape will be based on satisfying those design constraints. But when we're, but when we're talking about design study, typically what that is is we are optimizing as a post-process, something where we want to say, we just want to make it better based on an existing model. But with topology optimization, more specifically, now that 3D printing is growing and being incorporated within the design process, topology allows us to optimize during the design phase. So what is topology optimization? <clears throat> The process begins with a single part, like what you see there on the, on the top left image, which is what we refer to as the initial design space. Usually it's a little bit more overly engineered or uh, more material associated within the model. And you set up the problem like you would in a linear static analysis by applying materials, loads, fixtures. Then you define the topology component of it, which is the design constraints, manufacturing controls to minimize the mass and increase the stiffness or reduce the max displacement. So what's happening in the background uh, as far as the analysis running, the study references your material properties, specifically Young's modulus and the mass density, and is reduced uniformly across the, mass, uh, the mesh elements. Then it's redistributed so that the goals are then satisfied. And it's that redistribution and the elements left in the model that make up the resulting geometry. And that's what you see here. So that calculating phase is pretty much eliminating those mesh elements and uh, applying those. And what you're left with is that final model that is able to adhere that high stress or that uh, those design constraints that you've defined. And you utilize that to then get a better idea of what areas of the model you can remove. So who is topology or, you know, who, who is it intended for? And it's really any designer who's already utilizing linear static analysis, but more typically for that designer who doesn't know what direction the model should be going in and they want a tool for it to, to tell them these are the areas of the model that you may be able to remove material. So. Another trend that we also see is that we usually don't just optimize for stress or a single load condition. 
usually there's a lot more conditions that we want to optimize for and account for within our analysis. So we can leverage the technology of load case manager from simulation professional and incorporate that into our topology study. So what that means is we can reference different load scenarios that the model is going to endure and be able to then see will it survive or, you know, will it survive but more so can we optimize within these different load scenarios. And we also may be able to account or want to account different analysis type like frequency analysis. So starting 2019, they allowed us to control not only uh, being able to find an optimized shape to meet a certain factor of safety, but also to say, I want my first natural frequency to be below a certain number or within a certain range. So we're now allowing to not only just optimize for strength, but we're also being able to optimize for frequency as well, right? So um, a lot of conditions that we can apply all along with manufacturing controls where we can specifically say what areas of the model we want to preserve and we can tell the software how this model particular part is going to be demolded. Right. Um, so the next question is, well, what exactly do we get from a topology optimization study? Well, you get that representation of the model of the areas in which you can keep and the areas in which you can remove. Now you have a better idea of what your actual design can be, and you can use that as an outline, export it as a, as a part or a graphics body, and you'll receive this tessellated model, but it's more of just a reference for you to see how is this model can be reduced to be able to meet those design constraints and goals, but still reduce the amount of mass within the model. So if you find yourself, hey, I have simulation professional or simulation premium, or you're already using the tool, I definitely recommend using it today if you have that capability. And if you, are, if you do plan to use topology, here are some general tips for it. Uh, even though it's not re required, I personally still recommend running a linear static analysis on that first initial design space model because there's no point to try to optimize it if that initial model is already failing. I still recommend following those best practices that you probably went over during the training class or that you already follow as far as making sure the material definition is correct, making sure that your fixtures and loads are defined correctly. But in this case, since we're not really, in, in a traditional sense, trying to find that best stress or that more accurate stress value, we can get away with a more simplified mesh type, like a standard mesh or a draft quality, uh, just to reduce a little bit of the calculation time. And I really recommend you getting familiar with the load case functionality because you can introduce that within the topology tool to, again, be able to see the different load scenarios that your model may endure. Awesome. Thanks, Silvio. There was a question from the audience about what does the frequency refer to? So within topology optimization, as of recently, we can use a frequency analysis. Uh, what the frequency analysis predicts is the resonant frequencies of a structure. So that gives us information that given a shape and a set of material properties and boundary conditions, the structure might want to vibrate at, say, I don't know, some, some speed, 60 hertz or something like that. With that knowledge and knowledge of excitation frequencies that might exist in your system, we can now say that, you know, we've got an issue where the structure wants to vibrate at the same frequency that the excitation forces exist at. So using the frequency as part of the topology allows me to steer my structure away from different frequency ranges and areas of concern. I hope that answers your question. If not, chime in again and we'll offer a a little more uh, detail there. You know, what I think is so cool, Silvio, is that topology introduces new features into the design. The ribs here in this structure that we're looking at in this little lever arm are not features in the SOLIDWORKS tree. These are features that topology introduced into the model uh, as a result of its optimization routine. Pretty cool. So Terrence, um, Silvio told me recently that the topology optimization is actually powered by a Simulia technology. Can you tell us about that and the other optimization options available in Simulia? 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's absolutely true. Um, you may remember when I mentioned uh, Abacus earlier, I talked about how there's this extended packaging uh, offering where in addition to Abacus, you get these three other tools. There's FESafe for fatigue, and then iSight and Tosca, which are both optimization tools. iSight is our parametric optimization tool, so kind of like the design optimization available in Simulation Professional, but with some additional capability there. And then Tosca, that's our non-parametric optimization tool, and that is the tool where the Simulation Professional topology optimization was taken from. Uh, if you go and run that in SOLIDWORKS Simulation, you may actually see the Tosca name pop up on some of the options in there. Uh, I was uh, leveraged directly from that. Uh, so a little bit more about the, the full options here that are available with Simulia. Uh, these are separate software packages from Abacus, uh, but they're bundled together. So they integrate really well and they work together, uh, but they can go beyond that. So iSight here, we can optimize a design using Abacus, but we can also incorporate other software packages. So whether you know it's I want to change my design and then I want to run it through Abacus, I want to run it through an Excel calculation, I want to run it through MATLAB and then feed that back into SOLIDWORKS to modify the parameters, uh, those can all be combined. Uh, you don't really have to be a programmer to do that, uh, you just work within iSight to combine those. Uh, Tosca, it has the topology optimization that SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional does with more control and more options, and then also has something called shape optimization. Uh, this is a little different from topology optimization where instead of removing mesh elements, uh, it'll actually just move the nodes of the existing elements, and we'll see an example of that here. Uh, I thought the best way to take you through these tools and how they might be used uh, would be an example. And an uh, example we've got here is for a coronary stent. And so these are inserted into arteries in order to add some support. And if you were to get one of these, or maybe your doctor looking to implement one, uh, what you might want to know is, you know, how long is it going to last? Or maybe you're designing a stent and you want to know, okay, how long can we make it last? Can we improve that? And so this is a great scenario for analysis and optimization. Uh, the first step for installing this stent is going to be to crimp it down, collapse it, and that way it can be inserted into the artery. And so the first step would be to do an analysis using Abacus to figure out the stresses and strains that are going to result from that. And if we want to know how long it's going to last, uh, then we need to turn to fatigue and we need to take a look at what happens after it gets installed. Uh, the next stage that these stents go through uh, is an expansion stage. Uh, a balloon is actually uh, expanded radially in order to plastically deform that stent and place that into the artery. And then, of course, once it's in use, you've got your blood pressure that's going to be pumping up and down, and this is a cyclic load, and we can use FE Safe to figure out how long that fatigue life would be with the current design. All right, it's going to have to last all those cycles. Uh, every time your heart beats, uh, that is going to cycle a load on that stent and you know, hopefully that, that continues for a long, long time. So if we want to improve this, we can take a look at those optimization tools. Uh, the first one here, iSight. Again, this is design of experiments. It's similar to the design optimization or parametric optimization in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. Uh, we've got some dimensions on the model. It's a parametric model. We've got length, thickness, radius, and we need to figure out what the best values for those dimensions are. You know, we start with some design, but who knows where these dimensions came from? Um, you know, maybe it just came off a legacy design. Maybe somebody just took a guess as to what the best number would be. Uh, but maybe there's better values for these that would give us a longer lifetime. So we can program this with iSight to go and modify the SOLIDWORKS model, we can bring that into Abacus, we can run it, and it can cycle through that thousands of times uh, without me having to do anything. So, you know, I click go, go home for the weekend, come back, and I'll have an analysis that gives me what the response of stress is or fatigue to those three variables, and we can figure out sort of what the best case is and pick those dimensions. Uh, from there, we could go into Tosca and 
you know, this has topology and shape optimization. Uh, what we're going to use here, or what you're seeing on the screen, is shape optimization. So rather than removing elements, it's actually going to take the nodes on the surface, and you can see that's moving that out in order to blend the stress, reduce stress concentrations. We're doing a, a localized shape change to improve the performance. And so with iSight and Tosca, we've gone from an original design, globally optimized the dimensions, and then locally optimized the shape. It's got a little bit of a, a wave to it on the right there. And then if we go back, plug that into Abacus one more time, plug it into FE Safe, we can see how we made an improvement. And if we're improving 8% and then 6%, maybe we're taking something that you know used to last 10 years and now it can last 12 years before it needs to be replaced. Um, so I think whether you're working with simulation professional or whether you're working with the Simulia tools, uh, going through a process where you optimize your products can improve performance, reduce costs, and really help you uh, get a better design in the end. Awesome. Thanks, Terrence. Appreciate that. There's a question for you, Terrence, in the chat log if you'd take a look at that. Up next, we have Damon Tordini. Damon's been with us for over 11 years. He started off as an application engineer where he earned the SOLIDWORKS Elite AE Award. That's the highest level of a technical achievement, achievement within the SOLIDWORKS channel. He was promoted to simulation specialist and today manages both the SOLIDWORKS flow simulation and plastic injection molding simulation. Damon's a really bright engineer with a ton of simulation experience. And you may have seen him present at customer events or user meetings all over the West Coast. Damon, I've heard a lot from customers in the last two, three years about NVH or noise, vibration, and harshness. Can you tell us about the recently added acoustical prediction and flow simulation and what all is possible with these kinds of problems? Sure. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's, uh, that's definitely true. Um, acoustic concerns have increased um, pretty significantly and it's part of what the average engineer is concerned with. Uh, you may have seen in the news a couple weeks ago that Bosch Automotive opened uh, a brand new multi-million dollar acoustic test center, basically to you know, take uh, prototype vehicles and, and uh, figure out how noisy it is on the inside of the car and you know, see if they need to add more insulation, things like that. And uh, you know, the common types of questions people are going to ask are, you know, how loud is uh, the noise going to be from things like airflow or you know, wind outside or even you know, liquid flow? And what frequencies will the noise be at? Is it going to be really high pitched or a low rumble? And maybe most important of all, could sound waves in certain cases actually cause structural failure? Could they cause vibration to the point where something breaks apart? And so there's a variety of enhancements to some of the analysis tools that we offer from Hawkridge uh, to address some of these things. And sort of the first foray into that space was uh, some capabilities that were added to the sort of mainline uh, CFD product that we uh, sell and support, which is called SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation. So this, if, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is the general purpose CFD tool that's built into SOLIDWORKS. It's commonly used for a huge range of fluid flow and heat transfer problems, things like uh, the cooling of electronics, but also you know, liquid or airflow through valves and manifolds and ducts or even aerodynamics. And of course, the, the main appeal of this program is that uh, it's fully integrated into your CAD tool. So it's the fastest and easiest way to check these kinds of aerodynamic performance conditions that uh, acoustics are often related to. Um, but traditionally, uh, you know, this tool has been around for several years. There really wasn't anything in the program directly related to acoustics. Uh, if you were, if you had some sort of a noise concern about the flow, you pretty much have to, you know, look at other types of results and make a guess. Uh, but that changed in SOLIDWORKS 2017, the 2017 release, uh, which was when the first sort of uh, foray into the realm of acoustics was added to these products. In SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation 2017, uh, a couple result plots were added to show you something called the acoustic power level or decibel level, which is, you know, basically the magnitude of sound that would be created by some kind of fluid flow. Uh, in this case, you're seeing airflow through a motorcycle muffler. And uh, these results essentially in the software are 
calculated from the turbulence. You know, turbulence is a part of what SOLIDWORKS flow simulation has always been able to calculate using a, something called the modified K epsilon model. Essentially, the magnitude of the turbulence that's in your fluid flow, in this case the air, um, can basically be used to also calculate the decibel level, the acoustic power, using um, the formula that's noted in the help file there that you see. And so rather than you, know, you having to make some sort of a guess or try to calculate it on your own, users can get that sound amplitude directly now in the software. And so for example, that muffler has uh, got some air coming out of it at about 160 decibels in this case, really high velocity flow. So that's sort of the first step. You might want to you know, tweak the uh, design of the perforations in the muffler there or diameter or other things to see if you can kind of bring that noise level down, or maybe you want to make it louder, depending on who you are. And so that was added in SOLIDWORKS 2017, but another common concern is not just the noise level, but what pitch are these noises going to be at, right? Especially if you're talking about um, like a passenger's comfort level, that probably I want to make sure that uh, in an engineering process that you are eliminating really high frequency or annoying sounds first. And so the next kind of enhancement to acoustic capabilities was added in SOLIDWORKS 2018, and that's something called the FFT acoustics plot. And so what this did is in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, you can run your analyses in both a steady state uh, mode or what's called transient or time dependent. You can see how things are actually changing over time. And if you run that kind of a time dependent analysis, there's this new FFT acoustic results plot that will take the pressure results that are calculated over time, and it'll convert that into the frequency domain with the Fourier transform, and it can generate a curve like what you're seeing on the screen there. So we're now basically able to get the spectrum of the noise generated by the fluid flow, and not only see that decibel level, but what frequencies the decibel level is at. And maybe you want to see whether you know, making a design change uh, doesn't necessarily make the object quieter everywhere, but it maybe shifts the noise down to a, a low rumble that uh, is easier to deal with. And so this is another huge uh, kind of leap forward as far as you know, trying to actually design around um, sort of oral comfort levels uh, and uh, you know, just those kinds of sonic concerns of what the typical user of a product will be uh, concerned with. So that's also um, a new plot that's basically just uh, automatically generated for you in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, as long as you do that kind of a time-dependent analysis. Now, if you wanted to go beyond this to an even more detailed look at a sort of sound wave propagation, you know, of course, it would be possible to do a time-dependent analysis with a very sort of small time step, as we would call it, to look at what's happening at very high frequencies or, or you know, very high speeds as far as like a sound wave moving through fluid. But that traditionally has been really tough to do in a typical Navier-Stokes CFD program, which is what SOLIDWORKS flow simulation and pretty much all other CFD tools are based on. But there's a new tool that we now offer through Hotridge called Simulia XFlow, which is a different type of CFD tool. It's based on something called the Lattice Boltzmann approach instead of Navier-Stokes. And this new calculation approach is a much more realistic and much faster way to calculate highly dynamic events like uh, turbulent eddies forming and dissipating or these kinds of acoustic waves moving through a fluid. And so whereas uh, you know, simulating like uh, an individual acoustic wave propagating through the air uh, used to be something that could take days of simulation is now possible in you know, mere hours with this kind of approach. And so if, you're, if you are looking for that level of fidelity in a simulation, you know, the actual movement of sound waves and how they might bounce off the walls of, a, of your design and um, maybe interfere, then Smooly XFlow would be by far the best way to simulate something at that um, level. And uh, specifically what you can do is it, with a combination of the last Boltzmann approach that the program has and some sound filtering and frequency filtering options, you can actually simulate um, individual sound waves by using like a low pass or high pass frequency filter to isolate them. You could figure out 
basically what uh, sort of the source waves are um, in your fluid, whether it's a static air environment or it's so, you know, air moving through a, a product like that muffler. And, uh, you know, basically you'll be able to see how they interact, but also what they would look like individually. And so that would be sort of the first step towards, you know, realistically simulating how these waves, these pressure waves bounce off of the, you know, your, your solid material in your design. But if you're also looking to go to the next level and, and figure out what the structural impact of those waves would be, that's the latest enhancement that has been added to XFLOW 2019X, which is the current release of the product. And that is to combine these high frequency acoustic capabilities with Simulia Abacus. Terrence mentioned before that you know, Simulia Abacus is sort of the premier FVA tool that has a lot of uh, capabilities for different kinds of material failure, like not only post yielding, but fracture mechanics and vibration. And traditionally, you could simulate structural vibration from you know, acoustic waves in Abacus, but without any CFD capabilities, you basically had to mimic the, the sound waves through the air with something called an acoustic element. So you couldn't really see if you know, the, the airflow or the amount of air or velocities you were getting uh, would do something. But now with a combination of Simulia X-Flow and Abacus CAE via something called co-simulation, you can do a true fluid structure interaction or FSI where XFlow would calculate the behavior of these sound waves dynamically and Abacus CAE would be able to figure out what the resulting shocks or vibrations through a structure would be from those sound waves and the two programs would communicate with each other to, to actually figure out what that vibration event looks like and then of course you could get all the same types of stress or crap propagation results that you would normally get in Abacus. And that would be by far the most realistic type of simulation when it comes to a uh, fluid behavior and uh, structural vibration uh, simultaneously. You know, Damon, I, uh, I got to chime in and tell you, I remember the first time I saw X-Flow animation that came out of the SIGGRAPH conference, and I really don't think I'll ever forget it because it was so realistic. I'm thinking of that ship that was being launched from the dry dock, and you could see the free surface of the water respond to the, to the, to the ship and the buoyancy. Uh, the other example was this landing gear being retracted and the visualization of the turbulent airflow is just so amazingly real. It, it's really awesome stuff. Exactly. I mean, and that direct simulation of the turbulence is by far the most realistic way to go about it. You're no longer trying to predict the turbulent properties based on, you know, the other results in the software. Super cool. You know, I've, I've also seen, I feel like, a million and one different electronic cooling applications. Uh, simulated in my career. I'm thinking of enclosures with electronic devices generating heat, sometimes with fans, but typically we include conduction, convection, sometimes radiation. It could be all three of the heat transfer mechanisms. Are there any new trends or technologies that you're seeing companies using to help understand or solve these kinds of thermal management problems? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think we all know that uh, electronics and the uh, so heat transfer or temperature requirements of those electronics is, you know, that's been a concern for quite a while now for typical engineers. But the real trend is that most electronics these days are more compact than ever. Uh, Kyocer announced late last year that they had made the world's thinnest mobile phone. It was like five millimeters thick or something like that to fit inside of a business card case. And, you know, so basically the questions around the design have changed, right? In the past, uh, you know, in a lot of consumer products even, the questions were things like, how many fans should I put in there? Or where should the fans go? Or, you know, what kind of heat sink can I design? But nowadays, you know, most products are so compact, that's not an option. And the concerns around the design are more related to the port, uh, circuit board itself, the best layout of the circuit board, for example. Where should the components on the board go? Um, if I try to pack them too closely together, are they making each other overheat and you know what new design options are there that could actually keep the temperatures um, of those chips or other components within their limits if I can't just jam a fan in there and so there have been some changes to the tools that we offer on that front as well and one of the big ones is a newer product that was added to the SOLIDWORKS family a few years ago called SOLIDWORKS PCB um, of course we've always been able 
in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation to do a thermal analysis of something like a circuit board. But if you're trying to figure out more so where the components on a board should go, then of course the, the detailed design of that board becomes much more critical. And so having a board layout tool like SOLIDWORKS PCB, which can help you place the components, you know, with a like a robust library of those typical parts, and then actually do the routing of the internals of the board for you, that becomes much more important. And this tool essentially allows you to do that layout first in a 2D schematic, and then it automatically builds you a 3D model in SOLIDWORKS based on that layout. And so, of course, the idea here is that, you know, rather than um, trying to model up a circuit board on your own in SOLIDWORKS or do some sort of an import process, now it's much easier than ever to get the solid model that you would use to do a thermal analysis in flow simulation. And the idea being that uh, you could collaborate this board over to SOLIDWORKS and apply the materials and you know, heat sources or things maybe like the resistor properties of a chip and do your thermal analysis and then maybe make some changes, move a component closer or further away and push it back to SOLIDWORKS PCB. And that way you can actually balance uh, the other concerns as far as how a board is laid out in addition to thermal analysis. So that's one big change. And then on the simulation side in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, um, another big concern these days is you know, basically whether the parts are heating each other. Some of these products are so compact and the boards are so small that you've got chipsets and RAM and CPUs practically on top of each other. And so previously, if you were trying to figure out you know, what that heat transfer looked like, if, if the CPU was heating up the RAM or vice versa, you really just had to look at things like temperature results and sort of visually try to make a guess at it. But uh, an enhancement that was made to SOLIDWORKS flow simulation in the current release, uh, SOLIDWORKS 2019, is a schematic to show you that kind of result in uh, more detail. So this was automatically generated uh, based on any of the components that you apply heat sources to. And basically it'll draw you up this schematic which shows the actual amount of heat, you know, for example, watts or BTUs per hour or something, that's uh, being generated and transferred between the different components like the CPU on the board to the copper core on the board. And obviously uh, this is the easiest way to tell if, you know, for example, two parts are too close to each other and that's where you need to space things out. And so rather than, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, make a guess based on the temperature or airflow results, this is a more concrete proof that uh, things might be uh, too compacted and, and could be organized in a better way. So this is added in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation 2019. Now, traditionally, you run these simulations with kind of a simplified representation of the board. There are ways to put in the properties of the circuit board into flow simulation to mimic the heat transfer through the board based on how many layers it has and how much copper infill it has. And that's still the most common way to do it because most of the time we're looking at larger scale stuff like the, the overall position of the components and maybe you know, what the case is doing if there are, need to be vents in the case or something like that. But increasingly, because these products are so compact, you know, a lot of cases the cooling solution, the thing that actually keeps all these components you know, from overheating is the board itself. And the placement of the internals of the board like the copper in the traces or vias or ground planes, et cetera. And you know, a lot of cases there are a lot of products don't have a heat sink or you know, even vents anymore. They literally just have to get the heat out through the board itself. And so if you if that's really the key in your design and you are trying to figure out you know, how thick to make some vias or things like that, it is also now possible in SOLIDWORKS PCB to collaborate that internal detailed board layout to SOLIDWORKS. So the, the actual trace routing that SOLIDWORKS PCB does can be brought in. So this is not something you would have to manually model in SOLIDWORKS. And if you're taking this approach, instead of having to put in any kind of layer properties about the circuit board, you could actually just click on the parts for each layer of the board and basically apply copper or whatever material it is. And the heat transfer will be calculated directly on all of the, that detailed geometry to be meshed and simulated just like any other part. This is obviously a much more complex simulation that would take longer to mesh and solve. And it probably only makes sense for um, you know, really detailed examinations. Like for example, this is just a two layer um, stepper motor control board. 
But if that is the key to keeping a component cool in your design, it's now possible to simulate that with the direct internal collaboration from PCB. So this is by far the most realistic type of thermal analysis that's ever been possible in SOLIDWORKS. And of course, uh, you know, as all of these products get smaller, more compact, and you know, companies are fighting each other to make the coolest looking thing, the plastic enclosures around the products also are becoming you know, more complex and probably more difficult to manufacture. So in particular, if you are designing a product with thinner walls or more challenging features in the case, uh, it may become more important than ever to check whether or not that part can actually be made via injection molding, which is still you know, the most common way to manufacture those types of parts, despite the rise of 3D printing. And so SOLIDWORKS Plastics is another add-in to SOLIDWORKS that's been around for several years to help you check those concerns. Um, if you're a part designer, then most likely you'd be interested in the capabilities of the standard license of SOLIDWORKS Plastics, which lets you take that part file that you may be modeling in SOLIDWORKS and just do a basic fill check, essentially a pick a material and the location of the gates and basically see whether or not the part can fill in a certain amount of time and what that fill pattern looks like. Maybe you decide to change some of the features on the part um, so that it fills more easily or more quickly and doesn't have weld lines or air traps in problematic areas. So all of these things you know, can be combined in a pretty continuous design process you know, based in SOLIDWORKS to uh, make sure that, that all the concerns are looked at simultaneously for this kind of, a, of an electronic product rather than you know, sequentially or prioritizing one over the other. Awesome. Thanks, Damon. Hey, there was a couple of questions that came through the chat about multi-phase flow. Um, can we simulate like water with air in it? Correct. Yeah. And, you know, those are, those terms are often used interchangeably, um, free surface and, and multi-phase as far as the fluid with air. And actually you can do that kind of the simulation in both Sumulia X-Flow and SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. That's another uh, recent addition. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation can now simulate that kind of a free surface problem where, for example, it's a liquid uh, uh, that's not completely full of, in the volume. So, for example, a tank draining or um, you know, something sloshing around in a container. But uh, Sumulia X-Flow can handle those types of problems at a much higher level of realism partly because it adds in the calculation of surface tension, which is really important for things like bubbles forming or droplets, especially if you're trying to simulate like a nozzle spraying. And also Simulia X-Flow, because it's so good at this kind of a dynamic simulation, can handle you know, really high frequency changes in that flow. So literally tracking like a splashing of droplets and things like that. And it also can handle moving geometry, which is usually important in these types of uh, free surface problems. So things like uh, a boat rocking back and forth or floating in the water or a gearbox that's uh, actually splashing, you know, particles of oil around. All of those things can be handled in Simulia X-Flow. And another, Mom, no, one more question, Damon. Yeah, <laughs> Mom asked if SOLIDWORKS right. flow simulation can handle two-phase analyses or two-phase flow, like, for example, air in oil. Uh, Humam, so it can. Uh, it can do one gas and one liquid like that. But again, um, only at a much lower level of uh, fidelity. You, you will only really be able to see sort of a volume fraction type result. Uh, for example, you know, I'll say your volume is 90% you know, oil towards the bottom and then mostly air on the top. So you really won't get that detailed resolution of what the surface looks like or what individual droplets or waves would look like. And that's where Simulia X-Flow uh, comes in. It can do those, those things. I hope you enjoyed the webinar today. I, I think it was pretty enlightening. I know I learned a few things, which is a good sign. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Have a great day.